This is a Fox 8 News election special. Congressional seats. You decide 2011. Hello and welcome to a Fox 8 News election special, You Decide 2011. I'm Stephanie Schaefer along with Wayne Dawson and Tracy McCool. Election day is almost here and during the next 30 minutes, we'll profile some of the key races and issues you'll be voting on. And we begin with the highly controversial issue two. Issue two is the vote to keep or reject the much talked about Senate Bill 5. You've seen the protests, the emotional arguments on both sides. Now Fox 8's Bill Shield takes us inside Issue two. The opposition from public unions has been fierce. Members saw just the proposal of the new law as an effort by Governor John Kasich and the Republican controlled legislature to kill their collective bargaining rights altogether. And what they want to do is they want to bust up the unions so they can just do what they want to do. But while unions frame the issue as Governor Kasich versus them, the governor frames it as the unions versus the taxpayers. I don't think anything is being demanded of them that doesn't represent respect for the sacrifices that taxpayers and the, and the people who don't work in the government are making. Issue 2 will ask voters to choose whether to approve or reject the sharp limits on public unions that the new law would impose. Some of its key provisions are public unions would be able to negotiate on wages but not on benefits. On health care, union workers would be required to pay a minimum of 15 percent of their premiums. Unions could no longer take disputes to outside binding arbitration. And teacher strikes would be a thing of the past. The law would make it illegal for any public union, not just safety forces, to strike. On issue two, the governor makes an economic argument. Well, I think that if a private sector worker is paying 23 percent of their own health care costs and the average city worker is paying nine, I think it requires a little bit of balance. And it also gives local governments the ability to control their costs so they don't have to raise taxes on local taxpayers. The governor's budget cuts funding to local governments, but his office says the savings to those same local communities by trimming union benefits could add up to a billion dollars a year. The unions say their members are not overpaid. Yeah, I think the average is somewhere in the $30,000 range. That's not breaking the bank, I'm sorry. And the other thing is uh, the average pensioner Public employee pensioner is making $19,000 a year on a pension, and these are people who are not getting Social Security. The unions collected signatures to get issue two on the ballot, and after the initial polling showed that the union stood a strong chance of winning at the ballot box, the governor reached out with an olive branch. We're inviting them to talk. I mean, uh, we, we think that would be a good thing for all of us to sit down and see if we can uh, reach some agreement. Emboldened by the initial poll numbers, the unions wanted no part of a deal with the governor. Um, I find it very hypocritical. I find it very disingenuous at this stage of the game that um, now when we're ahead in the polls, that now all of a sudden the governor wants to, to meet with us and come to a compromise. So there will be no compromise. You, the voters, will now decide whether to back all of the governor's proposed reforms and make them the law in Ohio or kill them all, all at once. Bill Scheel, Fox 8 News. Well, here is what you need to know when you step into the voting booth. A yes vote on issue two means Senate Bill 5 will remain in effect. That's right, and a no vote on issue two means that Senate Bill 5 is no longer on the books. Well, you have no doubt been hearing a lot about how issue two could have an impact on police and firefighter services in your community. Fox 8's Todd Meany takes a closer look at both sides of that important part of issue two. When the debate over issue two was centered at the state house earlier this year, police officers and firefighters were among the most vocal in opposition. They were also the first ones in line to sign the petition to get it on the ballot. We put our trust in our equipment, our training, and most of all, our fellow firefighters. But issue two makes it illegal for us to negotiate for enough firefighters to do the job. Fewer firefighters means slower response times. We Are Ohio recently put out this advertisement talking about why firefighters want a no vote on issue two. Governor John Kasich says he came up with the idea to make things fair. Many public employees in the state, including elected officials, uh, you know, we pay 10% uh, for the pension and 15% for the health care. 
We just want to make sure that all public employees uh, are able to step up and sacrifice with the efforts that have been made by, uh, by all other Ohioans. Kasich and supporters of Issue 2 have their own advertisements trying to convince voters. Issue 2 asks government employees to help by paying 10% toward their guaranteed pension and at least 15% toward their health insurance. With many families paying far more than that, asking government employees to chip in isn't asking a lot. When it comes to Issue 2, both sides are very divided, but still focused on their specific talking points. When it comes to Governor Kasich and Build a Better Ohio, money is the main thing they seem to be talking about. 10% for the pension, 15% for the health care. That's what they're asking public employees to contribute. On the other side, it's the unions, which represent the firefighters and the police officers. They are concerned about staffing. They feel they won't have enough personnel if Issue 2 passes, and that means that they won't have enough crews on the road if you have an emergency at your house. They get to make all the final decisions. It'll be illegal for firefighters and police officers to come to the table and talk about safe staffing levels. Melissa Fazekas of We Are Ohio is opposed to issue two. She believes it's unfair that firefighters and police officers will no longer have a voice when it comes to collective bargaining. But Governor Kasich believes collective bargaining holds back local governments from controlling costs. I believe the ability to, uh, to uphold this would put us in a, in a better position, it would help local governments, and would be fair to people who don't work for the government. Police and firefighters don't see it that way. They believe that issue two takes away their voice and the politicians gain control. Uh, politicians don't always know what's best for us to be able to do our job. And uh, without collective bargaining, we're at the whim of a politician to decide something that, that they really don't know about. Sam Livingston has been a firefighter for over a decade. He says collective bargaining is the way to go. It's worked in the past and would work in the future. He and his fellow firefighters, along with police officers, are willing to sit down and talk with management to come up with a plan that helps keep Ohioans safe while helping out the state. There's always room to work when two people can sit down and work together. If one person can arbitrarily say, this is what you're going to have, and no more, no less, that's not work. Those in favor of issue two say they're not out to get firefighters or police officers. They're just trying to help Ohio remain fair and competitive. It would give people the ability to control costs and to provide some equity. Todd Meaning, Fox 8 News. When it comes to firefighters, the city of Toledo has been a battleground in the debate over issue two. Well, Toledo's current mayor, Mike Bell, a former firefighter himself, stands in support of issue two. That's right, while two former Toledo mayors, Jack Ford and Cardi Finkbeiner, oppose issue two. Many of Ohio teachers have been very vocal in encouraging you to vote no on issue two. For many voters, there's nothing more important than their child's education. Our Lou Maglio looks at that important part of issue two. We don't know exactly how many teachers were in these massive demonstrations against Senate Bill 5, now issue 2, but there were plenty. Teachers played a key role in getting 1.3 million signatures from people in all 88 Ohio counties to put the issue on the ballot. I teach because I care about kids. Shaker Heights teacher John Morris is working hard against issue 2. Which part of it bothers him the most? I think the one that takes away my right and my fellow teachers' rights to bargain on issues like class size, specifically. Okay. He says the bigger the class size, the harder it is to give each child the needed attention. Melissa Fazekas of We Are Ohio, a group fighting issue two, agrees. How are you going to be able to teach a child in a classroom where even the governor's education advisor has said could be as large as 50 to 1 student to teacher ratios? Teachers like other public employee union workers are concerned about the lack of collective bargaining for pension and health care costs. Many say they're willing to pay more. Governor Kasich says his plan gets to the goal faster and that there's little time to waste. I believe we're on the right track. The governor adds the 10 percent pension contribution and 15 percent health care makes perfect sense and is fair. One of the problems we have in schools are high administrative costs. We don't get enough dollars to the classroom. This would help. Another big issue here is the idea of automatic pay increases. The governor wants a merit system which the teachers oppose. I really see merit pay as being favoritism and kind of cronyism and competition over a limited resource, which is this undefined merit pay, which is built into a budget. He says teachers do realize there's a need for reform and that they are willing to work out new ways to evaluate teacher performance. I mean, teachers 
acknowledge that. And the truth of it is, teachers want to teach with good teachers. You want to work with good colleagues. And so through collective bargaining rights, we are in the process of creating models and systems by which we can evaluate teachers. He says many teachers are already working under alternate evaluation methods with success, but says any changes should be part of the collective bargaining process. The battle lines are drawn, and no matter who wins, the bitter debate will be remembered for years to come. Lou Maglio, Fox 8 News. A major selling point for supporters of issue two is merit pay for teachers whose students achieve high test scores. Opponents feel teachers should not only be judged by test scores, but by experience as well. We will have much more on issue two coming up later on in this half hour. We give each side 30 seconds to deliver their message and earn your vote. But up next, issue one and three in the state of Ohio, the fight over health care. There's more ahead as you decide 2011. A Fox 8 News special continues right after this, stay with us. Welcome back to You Decide 2011, a Fox 8 News special. We're taking a look at some of the key issues and races that you'll be voting on on November 8th. Now to issue one in the state of Ohio. A yes vote would change the state's constitution to increase from 70 to 75, the maximum age a person may be elected or appointed judge. Issue one would also eliminate the General Assembly's authority to establish courts of consolation. And finally, issue one would eliminate the governor's authority to appoint members to a Supreme Court commission. And now to issue three here in Ohio and the always controversial subject of health care. The major cause for exempting residents of Ohio from national health care mandates. Fox 8's Bill Scheel looks at both sides of issue three. We are done. Yeah. Under the federal health care reform bill signed into law by President Obama, almost every American will have to buy health insurance. Supporters of Ohio Issue 3 say that provision itself is not what America stands for. Should you get health care? Probably so. Should you be compelled to get health care under penalty of the Internal Revenue Code penalizing you and possibly prosecuting you? Absolutely not. Opponents of Issue 3 see it differently. We have laws even in our state requiring you to buy auto insurance. If you're a driver, you have to buy auto insurance, you'd buy from a private company. Privilege versus right. Uh, you know, uh, driving a car is a privilege and you can opt not to do it or not. There are three basic parts to issue three. First, it says no law shall compel any person to participate in a health care system. It also says no law shall prohibit the sale of health care or health insurance. It also forbids any penalty or fine for the sale or purchase of health care or health insurance. Even though it also contains a catch-all clause designed to limit the scope of its language, critics say that language is dangerous. I have taught legislative drafting, and the drafting of this would, would not have passed my course. Law professors Max Melman and Jesse Hill at Case Western Law School wrote a report for Innovation Ohio, a group opposed to Issue 3, entitled Bad Medicine. In it, they argue that the broad language of Issue 3 could prohibit the state from licensing doctors, regulating health insurance policies, or even collecting data on public health issues that could affect Ohioans. There are lots of aspects of state law that affect the health care system for their own good, such as protecting them from infectious diseases, protecting them from incompetent uh, uh, physicians and pharmacists, and uh, all of that would be jeopardized by this language. I think they're taking a rather restricted interpretation of the language of Issue 3. Former Senator Grendel, who's now a Geauga County judge, says the intent of Issue 3 is simply to protect individual freedom. I really believe this comes down to that basic, simple, fundamental right. The government can't tell you what to eat, the government can't tell you what religion to believe in, and the government cannot tell you that you must contract for a service when you don't want to do that contract, and that's what health care is. The professors say the fate of federal health care reform will ultimately be decided by the U.S. Supreme Court, no matter what Ohio Issue 3 says and even if it passes. A state constitutional amendment is not actually legally able to override um, the federal law in any case. Federal law is always supreme. But if Issue 3 passes, opponents believe its provisions prohibiting the state from licensing doctors or regulating health insurance or collecting data on infectious diseases would become the law in Ohio. We would no longer be able to protect the vulnerable. We'd no longer be able to preserve public health. This would be an absolute disaster. But Grindel says the doomsday scenario misses the intent of issue three 
protecting the individual. I think we crossed this very important line when we say that the ends justifies the means. The ends of addressing the cost of health care justifies taking away individual freedoms to decide whether or not you are going to pay for health care. And now the decision on whether or not to pass issue three is up to you. Bill Scheel, Fox 8 News. In addition, opponents of issue three say if this measure passes, there will be years of appeals and the courts will ultimately decide which parts of it will go into effect. There's more to come as you decide 2011. A Fox 8 News election special continues. One of the hottest races in Northeast Ohio is the fight for mayor of Akron. Will Don Pasquale keep his job or will Jennifer Hensel take it away? You will hear from both candidates next. Stay with us. Welcome back to You Decide 2011, a Fox 8 News elections special. We're taking a look at the major issues and races you'll be voting on on November 8th. And in the city of Akron, the race for mayor is heating up. Fox 8's Dave Nether spent time with both of the candidates. I don't want to just be mayor. That doesn't interest me. I want to work at the job of being mayor. Come here to Akron. After 24 years in office, Democratic Akron Mayor Don Pasquelic realizes being the incumbent is not necessarily an advantage this November, as he faces a political newcomer and Republican attorney Jennifer Hensel. Hi, Michelle. Um, I'll be right with you. Certainly it's an uphill battle to try to introduce myself and let people know that. So and there are many citizens in the city of Akron, and most of which uh, have been voting on the Democratic ticket. Okay. However, like I said, I think at this race, at this time, it's more about what does she have to say? I'm running now in a general election against a, a person who's younger than me. You know, you think of the younger person being the one that has creative ideas. No, if somebody wants change and continue to change and evolve and get better and improvements, that's really me because that's what my administration has been about. Entering November's general election, both candidates are talking jobs. If I'm a business, it has to make financial sense for me to stay here. That means the taxes have to be lower than the next door neighbor's taxes and the utility rates have to be reasonable and or lower depending on my business than the neighboring areas. We would have lost Bridgestone, Firestone, 1100 jobs for sure. We very easily could have lost Goodyear because the other three major rubber companies moved their corporate headquarters and we said we're going to make a determined effort to keep these jobs and add other ones. And we've been recognized literally around the world for our job attraction, our job retention program. They are also crunching numbers after a state auditor called for a change in the city's accounting procedures, putting Akron on fiscal caution. We've had a clean audit for the last 30 years. We have a clean audit this year. He has decided to use this and to point out and make this designation, even though we believe it's totally a matter of interpretation. That is a fact of life in any municipal government. But the problem is, is that um, the city of Akron's finances have been in such a state that the, the auditor has been unable to determine what that financial state is because we have so many funds. Public safety, police and firefighters are also among the candidates' priorities. In the primary, there was much discussion about the fact that our numbers are lower than they should be. I need to talk to the, act, need to talk to the police about that directly. I would like to hire more. We have so much money in the budget. We're spending 70-some percent of our general revenue already on police and fire and there isn't any more money to come from. Both say they are taking their challengers seriously. I don't think that just because the odds are against you or you have uh, m maybe not a great chance of success that that should keep you from trying. So we're trying. Experience still matters in important issues like what we're dealing with and I think our record is, is a very clear record of success that we're running on. In Akron, Dave Nethers, Fox 8 News. If she wins election, Jennifer Hensel would also become Akron's first female mayor, something she says she is not making a big part of her campaign. There is more to come right here on You Decide 2011. Up next, the final word on issue two. We give each side 30 seconds to make their case. 
and earn your vote. So hear their message when you decide 2011, a Fox 8 News election special continues next. Welcome back to You Decide 2011, a Fox 8 News election special. Throughout this half hour, we have given you a look at some of the key issues and races you'll be voting on this election day. We turn our attention now back to issue two. Here's Governor John Kasich with his final push to earn your yes vote. Well, you know, I, I think really what it gets down to is a sense of equity. Um, most people don't have a guaranteed pension. Those that do, we're asking them to pay 10% to the cost of that pension. Most people don't have a 15% cost of health insurance. It's a lot more. We're asking our public employees to pay that. We think it will help local governments to avoid tax increases if this is uh, retained. And secondly, there's a big element of fairness between those who don't work for the government and those who do. And I think equity is what we're searching for. Now to the opposition to issue two, the organization known as We Are Ohio. We gave them the same opportunity to make a final appeal to voters to vote no on issue two. And here now is a spokesperson for We Are Ohio. It's unfair because it takes away the rights and voices of people like police officers and firefighters and teachers and nurses. It's unsafe because it's going to hurt our local communities. It's going to make it illegal for firefighters to come to the table and talk about safe staffing levels. And it also is going to hurt our local communities. We know that strong communities are built on good jobs. And these public servants wake up every morning to serve our local communities. And it's going to, it's going to take away jobs. And a reminder, Fox 8 News is your source for complete election coverage leading up to and on November 8th. We'll be on the air first with results on Fox 8 News at 10. And you can also get instant access first and fast 24-7 on Fox8.com. Well, that wraps up You Decide 2011, a Fox 8 News election special. From the entire Fox 8 News team, thank you for watching. Remember to get out and vote on November 8th. So long, everyone.